This video will describe a uh, advanced setup for training with Fabian's QRQ app. As you see right here, that link will be in the show notes. So we have it set up here. We're running a word, whole word sound training module where it will send a random list of complete words. And I have it set at 65 here as a starter. And instead of sending the normal audio out of QRQ, we're going to try to filter that audio, regenerate it, uh, so that it can be adjustable. So you can kind of dial in how you want to hear it. And instead of having to go F5 and then taking a look in there. There it is. So as you see right here, I have the CW pitch set to 1600 and the raw, the rise and fall time to zero. And the reason we're doing that, let's go ahead and send one here. Having it be regenerated, then you can kind of dial in as you get faster and faster. Sometimes the pitch and the rise and fall time and the wave shape itself is critical to you being able to copy it. So we're using a VST plugin called Sine CW, where you can adjust the pitch, the volume, the type of waveform, the type of raised cosine window. I'm using exponential. It has its own bandpass filter, and you can dial in the center of the frequency and the Q, and it has adjustable rise and fall time. I have it set to a numerical value at 1.7 that probably is around six milliseconds. This number is not milliseconds, it's just a mathematical aspect of the plugin itself. So basically what we're doing is we're coming out of Pulse Audio with QRQ. It's going into a del delay line. And I found that sometimes when you hear the tone, as soon as you use your hand to hit a button to resend it or to send it, that that action of the brain trying to do something isn't quite finished by the time the you know the quickness of the word sending. So I like to put a little delay between the action of doing something and then relaxing the muscles and then allowing the brain to hear what's coming in. And for me that works pretty good with this little delay line. I have it set to about just under a second. Then it goes to a VST host that's housing these right here. So we have it coming in and it's going to this trigger. The volume out of QRQ comes into here and it triggers something, an event. So it's not doing it now, it just triggers it. You can also set it lower, you can adjust the weight. Too, too much. So you can set that a little bit from light to pretty heavy. And what this is doing is it's triggering. As soon as that volume gets over that threshold here, it sends a MIDI message, a note on, a note off, that clones and duplicates perfectly the incoming element from QRQ. Then the message from Regate goes to CW, and CW is a software code practice oscillator. So Regate is keen, Sine CW. Sine CW, even though it has its own bandpass filter, it's going to another bandpass filter, and these are all free and they'll be in the show notes, called M Bandpass right here. So let me show you what happens when we don't use M Bandpass. And again, this is more critical as you get up higher. So let's try it again. And I'm hitting I'm hitting F six to repeat the first word. The first word hasn't been announced yet because I haven't hit enter a second time. And I'll do that in just a second. But let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer here on the bottom right. And I want to send out a, bitch, a bunch of them and I want to hit the bypass button here and you can see what the difference is. You're going to hear more edge noise. And the higher you go, the more edge noise there might be, and sometimes it might be equal in volume to the, if not even more than, more than the actual tone itself. 
So I'm going to hold down F6 for a little, little bit, and it's going to send a bunch of them, a bunch of repeats of that first word in a 50-word randomly sent word list. So it shuffles the deck every time you bring up this one word list, and it sends them randomly. Adjust the pitch here. The volume. So a little bit different sound there. And it kind of gives you an idea. Let's take it up even higher. Let's see if we can get this up. We'll double the speed here. Go up to 130. And we'll do it again. And you can hear the edge noise even more up this high. So we're in bypass mode here. And I think you can kind of pick up the idea there. There's quite a bit uh, more edge noise without using this final bandpass filter. And I think that's just about the main idea here. Let me go over the plugins just a little bit. And let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to hit enter and you'll see the word. It should be shows. And that's the next word sent. As you heard, there was a slight delay. And I, again, that gives your brain a little chance to relax from commanding the muscles to move and hit a button. And the actual sound of hitting that button, and then all that rests and kind of fades away, and then the word is sent. So it just allows a little bit more attention uh, focus on the, uh, the next word that's going to be sent, which should, be, should have been following. So these plugins are going to be listed in the uh, show notes here. Uh, M -band Pass is pretty easy to set up. You just click Enable, and then just take your arrow and dial up where you want this to be. I'm about 100 hertz below and 100 hertz above the actual sent frequency. And we're using another one here called M Tuner, and it's about 830 hertz coming out of Sine CW, the VST plugin. So that gives me an idea of where to put this band pass. And we'll go over this one more time. So it comes out of Pulse Audio, goes to a delay line, then to a VST host. Inside the VST host, we have these plugins. Get this over here just a little bit. Okay. And these are the nodes. So that's the audio out, the audio in. This comes into Regate. Again, it's this is just a threshold you set with this slider here. And go use these settings to start out with. Now the filter I have on Regate is just above and below the 1600, that should be about right there actually, about 1600 hertz that's being sent out from QRQ, that application. And you don't have to worry about this one because we're not using the audio after it. 
because this send MIDI on open and close, this note 55, that tells sine CW where in that frequency range you want the pitch to be. So you can start out with about 55 and then vary it up and down. Goes to the bandpass to the uh, M tuner so you can see what the frequency actually is. So you can adjust bandpass. We're going to span a spectrum analyzer so you can look at the uh, waveform spectrum and, and uh, see if there's any other things, artifacts, audio artifacts on here that you might want to try to remove if something's going awry. Otherwise, it's, it's just a double checking system. And then out and it goes over here to system which is my sound card the screen recorder and this is the scope let me show you that real quick this is the green uh, pattern is on the channel one and on channel one is the output of QRQ before it gets filtered and on the bottom is the sine CW after the filter so you see it has a pretty good waveform so let's set that up one more time And you can see it matches it perfectly. And this is what that exponential waveform looks like. We can even take it out a little bit farther and try it again. And we hit enter and see if we have it right. Purist. All right. So that's the way you train. Now in, on uh, QRQ, you hit the page up, page down to lower the speed. And you just, so that's bringing it up. So I'm hitting page down now. It's going back down in, in speed. Hit F6. You can raise it up, hit it again, again. So if you don't get a word, you can repeat it. And if you get a word wrong, you can hit F7 and go to the last word you see there, which would be purist. And so the, this is the F6 or the F7 are two of the greatest features of QRQ because it allows you to repeat the current word. If you still get it wrong, you can hit F7. And knowing what the word is, it helps your brain train. So go down until you can kind of conceive that, oh, there it is, then start raising it back up to where you want to be, where you're practicing at. This is all done in Jack Audio, and there's lots of tutorials about Jack Audio in this uh, YouTube channel, so you can consult with those if you're not sure how to do this. The LV2 is from jalv.select. This is the Jalv.gtk, and it, it uh, brings in all the LV2 plugins on a Linux operating system. And for the delay, just click in here. I'll show you how to get to that. And I'm using the linear interpolation, simple delay line right here. And that, that has helped me a little bit uh, there, with that slight delay. It gives, again, it gives the uh, brain a chance to relax from having done something to going into reception mode. So now you're ready to hear the word. And you're not also uh, interfering the sound of the CW being sent with the sound of clapping the, the keyboard with that clunk sound that it makes. So sometimes when it's being sent immediately, you get both at the same time. So it's it's a little bit of QRM and QRN at the same time. So that's just the basic setup for an, kind of an advanced configuration to help with extreme training for QRQ when you, things are really getting critical at the higher speeds between the band, you know, the edge noise, the pitch. And it seems like the higher you go that uh, it's, it's a little less edge noise, a little more clarity on the tone if you raise the pitch a bit, up <laughs> pitch a little bit. All right, thank you for watching.